today's project diary, I will give you a list of five edible companion flowers. Hi and welcome to Project Diaries. In today's video, I want to talk to you about edible companion flowers. Now, if you don't know about companion planting, it's basically a series of different flowers or plants that you can group together to either help attract lots of pollinators or a natural repellent to stop pests. Now today I'm going to give you a list of five but there's many more that you can do and I will do some more videos in the future so don't forget to subscribe. But here's my top five list of edible flowers. Number one is nasturtiums. Now this is their common name but they're also known as tropiolum. These are an extremely fast and easy flower to grow and are extremely good at attracting beneficial pollinators like bees and hoverflies. By planting these in and around the vegetable patch they help to attract natural predators to keep down aphids and whiteflies. They work extremely well around roses, cabbage, kale and cauliflower. Cabbage white butterflies and caterpillars find these almost irresistible and will attract them to lay their eggs on the nasturtiums instead of your vegetable patch. They come in a variety of really great bright colours and are one of the most versatile edible flowers in this list. You can pretty much eat the entire flower including the leaves, I just wouldn't advise eating the stamen. When consumed the first flavour you'll notice is the sweet taste from the nectar followed by a peppery aftertaste which is similar to watercress. They're an extremely healthy addition to a salad mainly because they contain 130 milligrams per 100 grams of vitamin C which is virtually the same amount as parsley. Not only are they great whole you can also add them to white wine vinegar and make a salad dressing. You can also pickle the seed pods and use them much like capers. They're also really good in with pasta, stir fries or just that added touch to garnish the plate. Not only are they good with savoury dishes, they work really great with desserts such as ice cream. If you're one for having garden parties in the summer, you can really impress your friends by steeping these in vodka or gin and having them in cocktails such as martinis. In case you were wondering, I will be doing tutorial videos on all five of these flowers in the future, so don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to get hold of any of these seeds, I'll be leaving some links in the description below. Number two is borage. Much like nasturtiums, these are really easy and fast to grow and they attract many natural predators and pollinators. They also work really well to repel tomato worms and cabbage worms, which means these are a really good companion plant with tomatoes, cabbage, squash and strawberries. Borage is also used in many herbal medicines and can also be found as a seed oil. When consumed, these tiny blue flowers have a similar taste to cucumber and go really well with salads, cold soups, ice creams and sorbets. They can also be used as a great delicate garnish on cakes and desserts. They can also be added for an extra flavour in fruit punch and iced teas. But my personal favourite when it comes to borage is using them in a really refreshing gin and tonic. Number three are golden marigolds. Now you can get many different varieties of these. They started off in Mexico. You can get English and Scottish ones. But my personal favourite are the French marigolds. Now these are an extremely popular companion plant for beginners and well seasoned gardeners mainly because they enhance the growth of basil, broccoli, cucumbers, aubergine or eggplant, potatoes, squashes and tomatoes. Their bright colour and sweet nectar help to attract lots of pollinators and work really well around melons because they detract beetles. Golden marigolds are known to be used as far back as the ancient Greek and Roman times and are widely used in the Middle East and Indian cultures. They're widely used in herbal medicines and cosmetics and can also be dried to dye fabrics. Marigolds have a slight citrusy taste and the dry leaves can also be used as a replacement for saffron. The petals can simply be added to any salads, soups, casseroles, stews, rice dishes and can even be used while making bread. You can also dip them in a light tempura batter and fry them for a hot snack. Number four is lavender. There's 47 known varieties of lavender stretching across the world, all across Europe, north to east Africa, the Mediterranean, and all the way from southwest Asia to southeast India. This shrub-like perennial is commonly known for its relaxing qualities and is usually made into essential oils. Lavender is also really good at attracting pollinators and natural predators. The smell is also great at repelling slugs and deer. It's also a good idea to plant lavender anywhere near broccoli, cabbage and fruit trees. This will help deter any moths as well. If you'd like to learn more about beneficial insects in your garden, here's a link to my video. 
but lavender can also be eaten to help take in a lot more vitamins and minerals. Its sweet floral taste can be overpowering if overused, but it's really nice in small quantities used as a garnish in fruit dishes, green salads, desserts or soups. You can also use it to colour and infuse sugar for dessert toppings and baking. Lavender greens can also be used in much the same way as rosemary. Eating lavender on a regular occasion has been known to improve eye health and prevents cataracts. Number five are pansies. Now these used to be one of my favorite flowers as a child as they used to be all over my nan's garden. These delicate and beautiful flowers are extremely hardy over colder weathers and was extremely popular as an edible flower over the Victorian times when Queen Victoria reigned. These work for a great companion plant with alliums and onions as they help to repel white butterflies and ants. Pansy's amazing array of colours attract lots of beneficial insects and pollinators such as bees, hoverflies and ladybirds, which will naturally help keep down any aphids, white flies or spider mite infestations. So they work really well next to vegetables that are prone to these attacks, such as beets, beans, cabbage, broccoli, carrots, lettuce, cucumber, peppers, passion fruit, strawberries and onions. Pansies also have an amazing quality when used in herbal remedies and medicines. The antibacterial and antifungal properties allow these to be used in many things such as skin treatments for acne, psoriasis, eczema or itching. They can also be really effective steeped in boiling water and drank as a tea. They are an acquired taste when eaten because even though they're slightly sweet they tend to have a winter grassy aftertaste. Simply mix the flower heads in with salads, cold soups, stews or anything you can think of. Finish any dish off with a stunning burst of colour and used as a garnish or anything sweet such as desserts or baking. I hope today's video has taught you all about companion plants and edible flowers. If it has don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you'd like to try growing any of these edible flowers at home I'll leave some links in the description so you can get hold of them online. And if you have any other great ideas on what to do with edible flowers, don't forget to leave me a comment in the message board below this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to keep up to date with all of my future releases. Here are some great new playlists for growing and building projects. And if you've tried these or any other projects, I'd love to see your progress, so please post some photos in my Facebook gardening group in the link below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.